from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster uh, who's here to make you feel safe, uh, let you know you're seen, to do his best uh, to keep growing and improving. But for now, the way I do that is by being myself, and I'm a little bit odd. Uh, and and uh, be honest, I space a little bit too. Hopefully I'll stay focused during this intro, but uh, if you've ever felt a little bit odd, a little bit different, you might be in the right place uh, because I'm comfortable. Like uh, It took me a while uh, to embrace that fact uh, and really use it in a powerful way to go off topic and never get to the point. And if I'm already not making sense, well, it's time. It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do this for you twice a week. Uh, Hey, everybody, before we get to the episode here, this episode was recorded a little while ago, and I just wanted to let you know that I'm here to create a safe place. uh, And, uh, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm doing the best job I can, but I'm here to create a a safe place for you. And that means that Black Lives Matter. So if you're looking uh, for support for yourself or to support the black members of our community, you could find resources and links in the show notes. Uh, Thanks so much. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I have a podcast I think you should check out. It's called The Confessional, and it's with uh, Nadia Boltzweber. You've probably seen me uh, sharing some of her tweets and some of her amazing uh, and caring thoughts. And, you know, especially if you listen to the show, all of us uh, have a little bit of shame and a little bit of secrets. And The Confessional is devoted to ugly confessions from beautiful people. The Confessional is like a car wash for our shame and our secrets. And if you're not familiar with Nadia, Nadia Boltzweber is a... Uh, a tattooed, foul-mouthed, recovering alcoholic who also happens to be a best-selling author and an ordained Lutheran pastor. But I really want you to listen to the confessional because Nadia creates a safe place uh, for for both her listeners and her guests, and amazing things happen. I mean, it's one of those podcasts where you listen and you feel your heart soften and you feel healing. You both feel the guests healing in their journey. And I don't know. It's just an amazing show. I really think you should check it out because Nadia's there. She's listening openly and guests talk about things uh, they're not proud of. And I mean, I know I've been there and it, I don't know, it really puts uh, something positive and special and good in this world out of, out of things uh, that, that are like are from the dark corners. It's presented by PRX and the Moth, and you could find The Confessional uh, if you search in your podcast app. It's The Confessional with Nadia Boltz Weber. Check it out today. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. One part of the podcast that actually interrupts your sleep so I can bring you a good night's sleep. It's part of the podcast where we talk about the listeners and thank them who supported the sponsors so I can be here for you on a regular basis. And oh boy, is Margie uh, breathing easy. She supported Air Doctor, got her huge discount from Air Doctor. And again, if you support Air Doctor, let me know this week, which is like the second or third week of August. I don't even know, but uh, because that's when they're running their spots and it's a really amazing air purifier. And again, it really, when I believe in a product, I really want to have a long-term relationship with a sponsor. And what they do is they look at uh, how many people responded to their spot, how many people uh, are happy they're sponsoring the show. So let them know when you support them, let me know. And I can try to thank you on the Sleepy Supporter Zone, whether it's Air Doctor or KiwiCo or Helix, uh, let me know. So I can thank you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need. If you need some help with your self-care, with your mental health, use the resources that are in the show notes. Crisis Text Line is a great place to start. Uh, you can use, you could text or you can use a Facebook Messenger uh, or you could get them on Facebook. Uh, and then I also want you to support uh, the black members of our community because black lives matter. So there's resources uh, to get started and being a part of positive change uh, in the show 
show notes as well. And then the third part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is something I support. And as someone who is a librarian who has worked with incarcerated adults, it's really important to me to support the bail project because I can see the inequities in the system. Firsthand, I've been there and the disparities. And so it's really important to me, especially something like this, that's a revolving bail fund. So your money gets used over and over and over again. You can find out more at thebailproject.org. That's the bail project. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bard, before we slow it down, can you let me know uh, a lot of people help out on the show, including you? Uh, who Chris are they? Posty Poster Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and yeah. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. And what do you say? We get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep? Trouble uh, staying? Trouble getting to sleep? Trouble staying asleep? Trouble remembering? It's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep we do with a bedtime story all you need to do is get in bed turn out the lights and press play i'm going to do the rest what i'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake whether it's thoughts of feelings of physical sensation changes in time or temperature uh, changes in routine uh, like, uh, so, you know, th- things that, you know, could be things on your mind you're thinking about, uh, that happens to me pretty often. It could be feelings or emotions carrying over from the day or the past or the future. Uh, it could be any of those things. It could be, uh, uh f- physical sensations, uh, what, like, uh, whatever is keeping you awake, uh, or it could be any of those other things. It could be anything. It could be something baffling. But whatever it is, I'm here to take your mind off of that, to keep you company. And the way I'm doing it is, yeah, I'm trying to establish or send you this safe place. Or, uh, you, you know, whether I'm there, I'm nearby, or, I'm you know, whether I'm in the vicinity. You know, I love that word. Or I'm uh, not. I just say, you just say, Scoots, I, I prefer you in a speaker across the room. Or placed under my pillow, or maybe I'm right here in your earbud. So I'm here, and I don't know if you can sense it, but I'm smoothing, I'm patting, and I'm rubbing down this safe place. One of the ways I do it is I send my voice across to the deep, dark night. I use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I go off time. So that means I go off. So that means creaky dulcet tones is, it means that my voice is a bit different. It's not melodious or catchy. Uh, or you say, well, it's, yeah, creaky dulcet tones. It's a sound you, you, you're aware of. Uh, I mean, I always use the morning dove. Uh, and I know there's a lot of morning dove fans out there. But for the most part, and I, I stand firmly in this place, uh, morning doves come in and out of my awareness. Like, like literally, I don't know if this would happen because I'm not a bird. Like, I'm a bird. I'm, a, I'm not a birder. I'm a fan of birds, though. But you test this out. Now, not every place in the world probably has a morning dove. Uh, so maybe there's another... A dove with an interesting sound. I don't think a morning dove makes a like a cooing type sound. 
and it's very distinctive. So maybe you have a common, and I'm not saying you're common, uh, morning doves. I'm using it as a illustrative point, I guess. Uh, uh, like a like a, a bird that uh, sounds pretty often, or that you assume, and I'm making an ass out of uh, morning doves in May as normal. But maybe your area has a bird sound. That's pretty common, and it could be. You say, "Well, but what about all the 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 singing birds are saying are rolling their eyes at me, or you know, giving me the the, the like this for a bird? You could give me the side eye. It's probably pretty. It probably is natural." And you say, "Okay, enough with the dad jokes about birds, scoots." Okay, so, but so you you uh, the for me so the, I really like the morning dove sound. It makes me feel good. But I'm sure that uh, during ninety nine percent of my walks, uh, there's a morning dove sound, and I'm just not you know I'm consumed with my own stuff. Uh, but every once in a while, I hear it, and it triggers me to be in the moment, or I'm trying to stay in the moment, and I notice it. Now, what was my, now I, I rambled so much I forgot my point. I mean, I guess my point was, uh, send my voice, low, oh, creaky dulcet tones. But you would never say, so the morning dove is a soothing thing, but you're not, it isn't like something that's, like some of those tweeting birds, uh, especially when they start early, you could say, okay, enough with the singing. Great, the sun's up, but you're happy. I, I get it. Uh, or you're mating, whatever it is. Like I'm not in the mood for it. Uh, with a morning dove, you say, oh, there's a morning dove. Now, I'm sure someone has a diary of when a morning dove moved in. The morning dove above, uh, you know, where I sleep or something that someone wrote a poem or an ode or an anti-ode. And they said, you know, like I've learned to loathe the morning dove. Uh, that, mo you know, I mourn every time, it, you know, that's, uh, I mourn my sleep is so lost. So that, but that's that's not what happens with this podcast. I mean, it does for some people. So creaky dulcet tones are, are, are it's so my voice. You see, well, it's kind of uh, memorable and forgettable at the same time. I guess that was my. I could have said it like that, but then I wouldn't have a sleep podcast. Creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders. I guess I don't have to explain that because uh, you know I just did an example of it. Uh, so if you're new. Well, first of all, if you're a regular listener, welcome back. I'm so happy to he be here in your ears or nearby, uh, to be here to keep you company. So thank you so much for that. But um, what was my other point? Uh, oh, boy. Uh, so I'm glad you're here. Oh, so if you're a new listener, so a few things to know. This podcast does not work for everybody. But for the people it works for, it usually takes two or three tries. So see how it goes is what I would say. Give it a few tries and just see how it goes. That's what most listeners say over the years. They've said, like, uh, I've probably heard it like hundreds of thousands of times. Uh, so give it a few tries, see how it goes. Uh, that's the first thing. Now, if, also, if you're new, if you're skeptical or doubtful or unsure, uh, can, that's another thing. That's perfectly natural. That's how most people arrive at this podcast. You see, this is confusing. This person's, I don't even know, the, the, like, uh, is this a sleep podcast or a podcast about, oh, antiodes? Uh, and they say, well, no, I don't think I could fill 50 minutes with antiodes. Antiodes, uh, the breath mint for poets that, uh, like, it's the, the, the breath mint that doesn't work, uh, uh, so if there's no poetry in your heart, uh, and you want your breath to reflect that, uh, use antiodes, uh, find them no, only in scooters for sale and scooters imagination. Hmm. Antiodes. Uh, they don't, they, you don't say that when you have them, you you don't say that, uh, neither does anyone else. Antiodes. When you're feeling good and you want to feel, you know, you you, you say you want you don't you're you're fed up with feeling good. Uh, have yourself an antiode. Write yourself an antiode. When you think of the sound of a bird, it sounds amazing. When you're tired of bird song, write an antiode. Antiodes tonight's sponsor. Find them nowhere uh but you could imagine you know you could imagine it and then find it uh so okay oh so new listeners sorry so the show's a bit different it's meant to kind of be consumed loosely 
like just like if you're just like listening to morning doves, that's not a super active thing, except for maybe some people. So I almost over, already over explained it. Just kind of you say, oh, there it is again. I wonder is you know I always I wa wa wonder why I don't notice morning dove songs all the time. Is it because they're not always singing, or I'm not always noticing? Uh, is that a cosmic paradox or just uh, one of my many uh, issues with trying to stay in the moment? So kind of listen to the podcast in that way. Barely listen. That's what a lot of regular listeners do. Uh, the other thing is this podcast isn't really here to put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company as you fall asleep. So if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here for an hour. If you need a lot of time, the shows are an hour to give you plenty of time to drift off. But I'm more here to be your boar friend your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie. Uh, if you're a surfer, your boar bra, uh, whatever it is, uh, like, like, like that's the role I'm applying for. So, yeah, I'm here to just keep you company as you drift off to take your mind off of stuff. The other thing new listeners will like usually need to know is structurally what to expect. And this can really throw, this can get the steam coming out of people's ears because, oh boy, do they let me hear it, hear about it. So I just want to tell you this and you say, oh, okay, it's been addressed. Or I'll validate, you don't need to email me. I'll just validate your strong feelings if you're still here. But usually those people are already gone. Uh, they sh- or they, sh- they usually fast forward to 20 minutes and then they, they listen for a few more minutes and then they go. And it's a legitimate thing. This structure of the show is very different. It starts off with a greeting. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends beyond the binary. Because I want to greet you and let you know this is a, a place I'm trying to keep and make safe and greet you. And that you're welcome here. Then uh, there's uh, an, uh, oh, then there's business. That's how we keep the show coming out twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays or Sundays and Wednesdays. That's the business part of the show. Then there's the intro. So the business is probably from like minute one to minute six or something or five. I don't know. Then from that five or six to 20-ish is the intro. Now, the intro is just, a, it's a big part of the show. It's actually like, yeah, 30% of the show or something. And it's a part of the method, but it's optional. So some listeners, about 2%, skip ahead to 20 minutes. Uh, so it is optional, but, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I already forgot, <laughs> like part this part of the method. Oh, but the intro, the whole idea of the intro is it e- eases you into bedtime. For a new listener, you say, oh, okay, I get the idea. This doesn't make any sense. That pro- that's what takes two or three tries. Then for the regular listener, they start listening to the show as they're getting ready for bed, as they're preparing for bed as they're starting the bedtime routine and the wind-down routine, or when they get in bed and they're getting comfortable turning out the lights and pressing play. So the intro, at least in my experience of uh, struggling with sleep, is that it takes a while to ease off. I want to give you time to ease off and slowly take you away. So that at some point you just stop listening to me. But I want to reassure you that I'll be here. So if you wake up or you can't sleep or you want to run the podcast all night, it'll be here for you. So that's the purpose of the intro is a long landing strip. Then there's the uh, then there's business. Then there will be the story. Tonight will be our episodically modular serialized series, Odder Things. uh, Which you can listen to in any order because we catch you up at the beginning of every episode. And that's about otters uh, and, like, uh, other friends that live in a swamp together. So, and and just uh, them, you know, exploring uh, their story. Uh, So it's a nice little thing. All is well. That's what uh, Emma Otter says at the beginning of every episode, or all will be well. So that's the structure of the show. Another thing to know is the reason why I make the show. I mean, not only am I good at going off topic and I have creaky dulcet tones and I have tons of superfluous and pointless meanders. Those come natural to me. But the main reason I make the show is because I've been there. I know how it feels, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. I've been through all that. So if I can help, uh, it would be my honor to help, uh, 
to take your mind off stuff to keep you company even if you can't sleep. That's one of the main things I always craved. Uh, and it's just hard. Like, even if you have a partner or you have a big family, you know, naturally a lot of other people are going to be asleep. So I always felt that, like, a little bit of feeling, I just want somebody to be there to say, hey, I'm going to be here to keep you company. Whether you're asleep or awake, I'm here. I'll, I'll be talking to you, telling you a story. Uh, so that's why I make the shows. One, I know how it feels uh, in, there in the deep, dark night. The other reason I make the show, and it kind of goes uh, on the flip side of that, is I believe you deserve a good night's sleep and that the world, your world, and our world will be a much better place if you can be rested and if you can live a fuller and flourishing life. And, and being rested is just a part of that, one small step. So if I can help, uh, that would be my honor. It really would be like, like it's just something that is very worth it to me. So I'm here to help, uh, and uh, yeah, th th I guess that's it. it like, uh, give the show a few tries, uh, see how it goes. Uh, but I'm really glad you took the time to check this show out. Give, see, see if it works for you. Give it a few tries. Uh, yes, I'm repetitive. Uh, I repeat myself. But I'm here to help. Uh, thanks so much for coming by. Uh, you're in a nice drive to help you fall asleep. And here's a couple of ways we're able to bring this podcast twice a week. Hey, before we get to the story here, I just want to thank you for listening to the podcast. And to let you know, if you're new or you're a regular listener, like uh, listening to the podcast is a huge help. And uh, you don't need to do anything more to support the podcast unless you want to and you're in a position to do so. And if you can't support the show or you don't want to, like you say, well, I'd support the show for free and let people know about it or, uh, you know, just, 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 you know, follow you on social media. That's a huge help. That is spreading the word about the show is huge. But also choosing saying, you know what? I don't want to support. I just want to listen to the podcast and put me to sleep. That's a valid choice, too. Or or you say, you know what, Scoots, I got a lot going on. And I say, I get it. Believe me, totally. I just want to point out that not supporting the show is a valid choice. It's as valid as those of you that do choose to support the show. And you really should only support the podcast. One, if you choose to, you're in a position to do so. You say, man, I want to get one of those air doctor air purifiers. Or, man, I want to save up. I want to get my nephew the Kiwi, Kiwi so Co. subscription. I want to get my neighbor's daughter that Kiwi Co. subscription. Or I want to be a patron. I want to listen to ad-free episodes episodes or I want more content or I just want to pay for a free podcast because I'm a rebel. Both choices, supporting the show and not supporting the show are valid. And I want to point that out and I want to say that, yeah, like literally it's just like one out of every hundred people that are, that hear this message, that, that, that then the show can be free for the other 99 people. That's the wonderful thing about this. And, you know, I do have to, 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 to keep these messages going to get the message to that person that is in a position to support the show. But for the other 99, you just kind of got to listen and, and, and hear me say this and say, I'm not in a place to take action, Scoots. I respect that too. So if you want to support the show sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors or sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patrons or just let somebody know about the podcast and if you don't want to support the show or you're new or you don't care i respect that too totally uh, thanks everybody and here comes the story all right hey everybody it's scoots here and uh, this is our ongoing episodically modular series uh, uh other things and I'm not actually the host of it, I'm, uh, so I'm turning things over. This, But I just want to tell you, you could listen to this in any order. Uh, Emma Otter is going to be coming up. She'll fill you in on everything that's happened in the series th thus far. Uh, so if this is your first time listening, don't worry. Like, uh, this is episodically modular. It does have some seriality, but Emma takes the seriality. It's a great because then you could listen to the earlier episodes like they're prequels. You know you love prequel movies, and I've heard that. Uh, and you say, okay, listen to episode six, and now I want to hear, like, now I want to go back. Because even books now, especially YA, the second or the third book is the prequel. Because you say, well, I really want to know, how did uh, uh, Tefe and Dari become, you know, you say, okay, go go ahead, listen to episode one, two, three, four, or five uh, after this. Uh, so this, without further ado, this is archived audio I discovered uh, from uh, Emma Otter. 
Uh, hey, everyone, this is Emma Otter here. Thanks for uh, giving me a moment of your time. I'm here to uh, tell you the story of my town, my friends, and my community, and some odd things that happened to us. Uh, so I'm Emma Otter. I live in a, well, I live in a community, uh, a swamp-based community. And some of you might say, well, what's a swamp-based community like? And I'd say, well, what's your community like? Are you in a riparian community, a forest community, a wetlands community? You'd say, okay, well, maybe you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you could do a little research and say, what is it like? Uh, but I'll, I'll kind of give you the overview. We live in a swamp. Some of swamps are underwater and some aren't. Uh, and we live in a greater swamp region, a swamp within a swamp region in a town uh, that exists within the swamp. And just like you listening, we're all highly intelligent beings. Uh, and uh, we have our own consciousness, uh, but we live together in community, uh, like individuals within a community that supports one another. So that's one thing to know. So the swamp is, uh, it's a greater swamp area. So there's a ta bigger towns and cities within the greater swamp community. And it stretches in three directions very far. But we just happen to be very close to the one direction. The swamp does not stretch any th further beyond, uh, which we call the place beyond the swamp, uh, which is actually seems like another swamp. We don't really venture beyond it. It's bisected by a road uh, rising up above the swamp. Uh, I think they call it like a, some kind of duct, a viaduct or something like that. I, I, like, uh, But it's uh, a road. On the road travel occasionally strange giant vehicles uh, with no one driving them. But that's worked into our childhood myths. So it's just a strange thing we avoid and we have cognitive dissonance. So we just learn to say, just don't go near the road or on the road. Because why would you go on a road where at unpredictable times, strange driverless vehicles drive by? And just, you know, now I know more than I knew uh, when I was a total child. So, you know, I would have thought they were their own beings. Uh, or something, you know, we had other myths and a lot of our myths are based for my friends and I on the game Bards and Big Bunnies, a role-playing game. Uh, but beyond the road is uh, what's called a visitor center and a bog walk. Uh, and then beyond that, I have no idea. There is one tunnel under the road. It is a, a secure tunnel. Uh, and, you know, as kids, we grow up and we always wonder, we dare one another to go in the tunnel. Uh, but you don't do it, because, especially because there's a gate there. So I live in a house with my parents, uh, my youngest sibling, and my older brother, Tefe, who were otters. Uh, Tefe considers himself the handsomest otter in town. And uh, just, just rolling my eyes. Uh, so that's who I live with. Uh, my brother Tefe is in high school. I'm in middle school. I have, uh, well, originally I had uh, three best friends. Uh, now I have four best friends. If any, you know, I have, of course I have my best friend, uh, top of the, but you know, really who says all, why does it have to be the, there's no bestest friend. It's just best friend. So maybe I've created space to have more than one best friend or maybe my secret best friend that's listening in their heart. They say, well, I know I'm Emma's best friend. And maybe you, dear listener, feel like a close, uh, nearly or a best friend of mine. And that's great. But uh, at, my actual friends are Vaughn, uh, who I also call V. And he's a little bit silly, a little bit goofy, very intelligent, uh, uh, but known to be wacky. Uh, an otter being in his own way, just like all of us here. Then my friend Elijah, we call him LJ. And Elijah is kind of our most principled friend. Elijah uh, believes in the truth, uh, believes in being honest. Uh, Elijah probably has a little bit more courage. Uh, 
uh, than, than the rest of us. Uh, I'd say our, our leader, but, you know, then I'm telling the story. So I'd say, okay, maybe we're all leaders. Elijah's probably the most grounded one of us, uh, too. Uh, though, uh, like, we, we all play role-playing games, so you see, with a sense of imagination. My other friend is uh, Willow, uh, and uh, Willow uh, lives... Now, Willow's from a family that's an important part of this story. So Willow lives with her mom, Frances, and her sister, Dari. And they're beavers, uh, and they... Uh, live together, the three of them. So that was what our life was like. I had my family. I had my friends who went to middle school, lived in my town, played bards and bunnies on the weekends or summer breaks. And it was a pretty happy life. And then something odd happened. Something odder happened. And that was that uh, someone arrived. Well, okay, a couple of things happened. We played a game of bard and big bunnies. Vaughn, Willow, and LJ left, uh, and on the way home, uh, Willow took a path less taken, and uh, quickly to summarize, we thought when she took that path less taken, she took a, she met like with an agent or something, and then became a, a star, recorded an album, making fun of our town, and moved away to a big city like Riverbottom or something, that's where her dad Lenny lived. So we were all very upset because the album was discovered. Most of the songs were making fun of us in our town. And uh, it was a bit embarrassing. But some of us suspected. Well, we also suspected because we also, on the night uh, Willow moved away, we we looked for Willow or the night after because we said, Willow, where are you? We didn't know at the time we hadn't found the album. And that's where we met a character, a, a duck-billed beaver named Billy who has powers, uh, like magic powers, through throat singing or bill singing. I don't know if she's singing in her bill or her throat. Like, uh, like kind of like Professor X or something. She can move things with the mind. She can cause people to do stuff. Uh, all those kind of things. Uh, Billy also revealed to us that she thought she might be able to help us find, or she knew that Willow... Yeah, that's what it was. She knew Willow was somewhere else, uh, somewhere called the uh, Size Down. And we said, is that like the the, the tower? Like a, t a Size Down is like another world, like inside of a tower, maybe a tower, like a wizard's tower or the tower from the Southern Swamp trilogy that goes down and up and is organic and also has powers. So we're not 100% sure, but we know Willow is in a place like that, and she did not move away and record an album. And so we're dedicated to finding her, and we had just talked to our professor about how we would do that at the Community Resource Festival. Meanwhile, uh, Willow's mom, Dari, or Willow's sister, sister Dari, Willow's mom, Frances, was obviously like my daughter moved away without telling me and recorded an album and started a career. Well, that's very disappointing, and I, it doesn't seem like her character. And then she didn't believe it, and she started communicating with Willow through wind chimes, where Willow was communicating with her by pop song through wind chimes. And uh, no one believed her, obviously. They said, your daughter that moved away is communicating with you through wind chimes. Uh, also, uh, Frances was suspecting she was seeing a big bunny uh, outside her windows and, and maybe a bunny with goose or something, goose feathers. And that was connected to Willow as well, a giant bunny. And because a lot of kids play bards and big bunnies, including Willow, people said, okay, that's interesting too. Willow's ex, Lenny had come to help, uh, but Lenny's kind of no good. I'll just tell you the truth. Though he's trying to help right now. So uh, that's like uh, where Francis was. Wait a second, I don't believe this, but everybody's telling me my daughter uh, it did head out to start a career. That's a little bit of a tough... Uh, thing to deal with. Now, her daughter, Dari, uh, 
It, when it fir- when Willow first moved away, Dari's instinct was to convince my brother's Tefe, to, my brother Tefe, to borrow my uncle's car so they could drive out to uh, Lenny's house in Riverbottom and see if Willow was there. Their friend Babs came with them. Willow was not at Lenny's house when. Dari left Lenny's house. She found Tefe, my brother, and Babs, Dari's best friend. They were K-A-S-S-I-N-G-ing. Uh, and then they drove, and then uh, Babs went for a walk. Uh, but again, very similar to Willow, where they said, uh, did she really go for a walk? Because this doesn't make any sense. And since then, Dari's been convinced. Uh, like People, again, have said, well, maybe Babs just moved away to the big city, too. But Dari's been convinced that that's not the case, and eventually her and Tefe found that, yeah, there's something else beyond the swamp uh, with a giant bunny print and the sounds and singing involved in this somehow. One other person we have to check in really quickly is Bold Bullfrog, uh, Leon uh, but it goes by Bull. He's the head of our community resource department and, you know, helping miti- mitigate anything, disagreements, and uh, solve problems. That's Bull's job. And Bull uh, at first was just trying to say, okay, well, it looks like Willow moved away. Uh, I'm sorry, Francis. Uh, I think Francis and Bull at one point were dating long, long, long time ago. And trying to solve, like, so Bull was just doing Bull's job, but eventually Bull said something strange is here. There's too many things, and Bull discovered, one, the album was not real. Francis, or uh, um, Willow, my friend, sorry, Willow, uh, the album was not real, and it was never recorded. It was a fake. Uh, it was just an auto-tuned performance from a um, talent show. And that the place beyond the swamp, the visitor center, was actually, Bull knew that it was part of a larger community resource effort, maybe an offensive community resource effort uh, by the greater area swamp authorities. But they said, there's nothing to see here, no willow, don't know what you're talking about. But Bull didn't believe that. Uh, Bull eventually snuck in there and saw that something was going on, something with... uh, like uh, portals, like dorm rooms, cafeterias. And right as Bull had made the discovery, Bull was uh, sung a a, 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 a frog lullaby to go to sleep. And so that's kind of where we start. But I just also want to tell you that don't worry, all, all will be well. So I always want to remind you of that is that one thing to remember in this story is that all will be well. And without further ado, uh, is our Hollywood announcer who starts these shows out, the most famous person in our town, uh, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was the boys and girls, the friends beyond the binary, otters, beavers, muskrats, porcupines, foxes, turtles, frogs. Even the weasels, uh, it's time for another episode of Odder Things Splish Splash. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bonderas. This is Odder Things, and I'm Emma Otter. And I guess, like, when I, we last left off, uh, when in our story, we were we had fallen asleep kind of talking to our uh, Professor Moose. And Professor Moose had give, put us to sleep with some meandering analogy about the Southern Swamp Trilogy and organic, uh, organic beings that are also buildings and saying, well, that's like a tree that grows up, it grows down. And also, how would we find something like that, a resonance, something maybe resonance or simple vibrations? I don't know. Uh, but we had fallen asleep, and then we had woken up and decided to, to go home and leave the fair, even though the fair, the community resource fair, which is a re- was really fun and seemed like it was fun, we wanted to kind of go back to my house and 
uh, figure out how we're going to track Willow down. Uh, and we did that. We, we had like a sleepover. First we said, okay, we're already asleep. Let's go home and go back to sleep to my house. And then we'll get up the next day. Now, meanwhile, also the next day, it was morning where, we know, everywhere where we live because, you know, we're all in the same time area. And Lenny had been staying at uh, Francis and Dari's house, and Lenny who was sleeping on the couch. Uh, and Lenny woke up and said, well, I need to get myself in a uh, shower and uh, maybe a swamp swim, and who knows. And meanwhile, Francis was cleaning up, and she found that, you know, Lenny, one of Lenny's other qualities, Lenny doesn't pick up after himself. And so Francis was cleaning up after Lenny because Lenny left his fancy leather jacket lying around. And uh, he'd also been in uh, Willow's room at different points. Uh, I mean, the door was open and, you know, the all the... He had taken down some of the wind chimes, but then uh, Francis has said, don't take down the wind chimes. I like them. They make me comforted. He had tried to fix, uh, like, uh, where, anyway, he'd done a lot of stuff, but nothing really useful. But Francis has stuck out in his mind that he, he she had, that Lenny had been in uh, Willow's room. And when she picked up his jacket, you know, when you pick up a jacket off of a couch, you, sometimes you shake it out just to get any dust or uh, fur off it. And something floated out of Lenny's pocket and floated to the ground. And you might know the kind of floating that a napkin does. And, and Francis knew it was a napkin. And at first she said, just like Lenny, put a dirty napkin in his pocket instead of uh, doing something with it. But she, as she hung his jacket up, she went to reach down to pick up the napkin. And she saw that there was crayon drawings on it or writing. And as she unfolded the napkin, she saw... And it triggered a memory in her of a different time when uh, Francis, Lenny, and uh, uh, Willow were all out uh, uh, eating lunch together. And uh, this was when Willow loved to sing. Willow always loved to sing, just like we all do. And Lenny had uh, been encouraging Willow and Francis had gone off uh, to talk to some of the neighbors that were eating nearby. And she saw, like, uh, Lenny and Willow writing in crayon on a, on a napkin. And uh, she had looked and she kind of smiled. She said, oh, what a nice moment. You know, rare moment for my daughter and uh, Lenny to share where they both seemed happy. And he, they seemed to be in serious conversation. And when she went back, she said, oh, what are you two working on? And Willow looked at her mother with great pride, and she said, well, we're working, you know, when I become a, a music star, uh, this will be my big moment. Uh, this will be when, uh, like, I'll need an agent, and, and Dad's going to be my agent. So, so we're working on a contract. And uh, Francis said, oh, yeah, you will. Like, that's great to start planning for the future. Uh, but part of her mindset, I think, it, like, is this a serious discussion? But it was written out. Uh, and she said, look at the deal Dad made me, only uh, 12%. Uh, uh, and she said, well, don't usually agents take 10%. Uh, and uh, she said, yeah, well, dad's going to like, and, uh, she said, don't, uh, and then she said, well, it's just, we're just imagining mom. We're just playing. And Lenny said, yeah, we're just playing. And Willow uh, had always kept that in her room, uh, but it had totally left Francis's mind. Uh, and she said, well, that's just strange that Lenny has that in his pocket. But as she was uh, kind of folding the napkin back up and putting it in, in Lenny's jacket, he came out. He said, what are you doing with my jacket? And she said, oh, I found, uh, she goes, what are you doing with this uh, napkin contract from when Willow was little? And he said, oh, I found it in her room. And she, Francis said, well, Willow, signed, you, she, she goes, did you, what are you doing with this? So it's weird. 
And he goes, oh, I wanted to see if we both signed it. And she goes, oh, you did, because uh, she she had looked, and it said Willow and Leonard or whatever. Uh, and she said, you're not trying. And he said, listen, if Willow's really signed these albums and made these albums, he goes, think about, uh, he goes, we deserve some of it. We supported her career. And Francis said, we supported her career. She's a kid, one. And we is a very loose usage of we. And Lenny said, come on, uh, Francis, uh, why don't you think about Dari? And uh, he goes, we could use the money so Dari could go to school. And you could use it to fix up the house and stuff, a percentage of it, a 2% or so. And then I'll take the other 10% and invest it in... Uh, and uh, Francis narrowed her eyes and looked at Lenny and said, so this is really why you're here. You're not here to help. You're here to capitalize on. And then she said, you need to leave right now. And he said, wait a second. And she ripped up the, 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 the contract. Uh, and Lenny's steam came out of his ears. And she said, please leave my home. Never to return. And she sent Lenny on his way. And Lenny... Uh, stomped out of the house, uh, frowny-faced. Uh, and he had strong words uh, for Francis, but Francis wasn't hearing them because they weren't the truth. Uh, though he did try to, uh, you know, heighten Francis's concern that Willow actually did record an album and move away. And he was successful at that, she thought. The only reason he wants to capitalize on this because it really happened. Willow really did move away start a career without telling me, and record an album. Now, meanwhile, in the morning, Bull woke up. Uh, now, when we last saw Bull, he was in the lab uh, below the visitor's center. And he woke up on his couch, super sweaty, with a bunch of uh, bog water nearby, one of those famous uh, things he drink too much sometimes of. And he said, what in the heck? Where have I been? Why am I so sweaty? It's like I am uh, can barely breathe out my skin. I said, where was I? Uh, and he said, wait a second. Did I like have too much bog water last night? Uh, but he knew. That he said, well, the last thing I recall was being at that uh, below the visitor center. And he kind of started to pace around, and he stuck out his tongue, and it didn't look like a normal frog tongue. And then there was a knock at his door, and it was two of the other resource staff, uh, social workers that work with the Re Community Resource Department, and they said, uh, Hey, Leon, uh, why, why are you at work? Uh, why, why weren't you at the community? You weren't even at the community fair. Uh, you missed the entire community fair. You're supposed to... You know, you're, and he said, oh, yeah, I'm under the weather. I'll have to submit a, you know, I'll draw my own acorn later. I'm just not feeling great. Uh, and they said, are you okay? And he said, well, I'm under the weather. Look at my, look at my tongue. Can you, and they said, oh, boy, your tongue does look uh, like non-optimal. And he said, well, what, what do you want? And they said, well, we do like uh, a couple of things. Uh, the music, the owner of the music store, you know, there was a line in front of the music store, people waiting to buy, because this is the launch day of a bunch of albums, and the owner of the music store didn't show up. Uh, and there was a lot of people trying to get stuff. So eventually we let ourselves in, and we there was a letter from the music store owner saying they took a job with that same record company uh, for distribution or something. And that, uh, record store was closed and, uh, had been sold, uh, to another company, some company with a bunch of letters and numbers at the end of it. Uh, so people were not happy because they said, where are we going to get our records? And also we wondered, what are we going to do? Like, who's going to take, take over? And, uh, he said, that's me. It's a prime downtown piece of real estate. And Leon said, okay, okay, what else? Uh, and they said, also, funniest thing, Babs' uh, parents heard from Babs. Uh, 
Uh, it was only a voicemail, but uh, they. she said she's with a record company, and she had moved away. She's actually on tour, international tour. I don't even know what that means. Uh, uh, but she's very happy, and she said to check their bank account. She'd already deposited a bunch of money into her parents' bank account, uh, and that they shouldn't be concerned, and that she would be she would be in touch, uh, maybe relocate them to live with her once she had like a a lake house, like she's moving out of the swamp to a lake or something, Leon. And he said, oh, who, which record company? And they said, the same record company as Willow. Doesn't that make perfect sense? They're recruiting, uh, they found our town to be a hotbed of talent or something. And he said, okay, interesting. Uh, and, he, and then they said, were you going to come into the office? And he said, no, 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 I got to go. I, I'm not, I'm, didn't you see my tongue? I got to go uh, soak my tongue or something. Because I can barely breathe, you know, I, I'm breathing through my mouth and not my skin. So I'll see you later. And they said, okay, thanks, Leon. And then they got to the car. They said, man, he's acting odd. And they go, yeah, I don't know what's up with him. And they said, how do you miss a community resource fair when you're the community resource officer? And they said, well, it's a good thing our, ta- good thing our town's resilient. So we didn't really, that was great fair. And they said, oh, yeah, did you go on this? Remember when we raced each other on the super slide? They said, oh, boy, was that fun. Now, while that was going on, we were waking up in my sleepover at my house, uh, and we were having a conference to say, okay, we got to track down uh, Willow. We said, Billy, do you know anything about this tower, about uh, size down? Like you kind of said, uh, but Billy was really quiet. Uh, we said, like, uh, what about this place? Uh, like, how do we find it? And Billy said, oh, I don't know. And we said, well, we got to track it down. Uh, if it's a tower and it's, and then uh, Vaughn said, well, what about, he goes, okay. He goes, sympathetic vibrations. And we said, oh, sympathetic vibrations, right, uh, totally. He said, resonance. And we said, okay. And he said, get out your tuning forks, because uh, we all have tuning forks, uh or some people have different things so they can tune their, like, so you can tune your instrument or your voice. But most of us have tuning forks because they always work and uh, they make good keychains. Uh, and you can kind of cut. And anyway, so we all had it. Uh, and he said, put your tuning forks down in front of me. And he, he said, okay, now hold them in your hand, in your right hand. Everyone hold your tuning fork. Uh, and we said, okay, nothing's happening. And he said, uh, you can't visually see a tuning fork moving. And he said, uh, uh, hold them near one another. And he said, that's what a sympathetic vibration is. But we said, well, what are they even vibrating? He said, yeah, hold them to your ear. And then everybody sang the tune, and we all sang the tone we were hearing. Uh, barely detectable. Uh, on our tuning forks and we said all of them are making the same sound and he said yeah and there's no uh vibration he goes we didn't none of us hit our thing to start it vibrating and we said okay and there was like a long pause like that okay Vaughn and he said there has to be a strong vibration coming from somewhere to vibrate these they just can't vibrate on you can't have a sympathetic vibration without a vibration to sympathize with. And we said, okay. And then we all looked at uh, Billy and we said, do you know, like, like, and we realized it wasn't Billy causing the sympathetic vibration. And he said, this is coming from the tower. And we said, so, and he goes, we have to find a way uh, to be guided by, he goes, we have to find a way to determine the strength. He goes, remember that one project where we made electromagnetic tuning forks? And we said, oh, yeah, with the lantern batteries. Remember, we thought we could use them to, uh, he goes, we thought we could make them into, we could use it to, you know, crack glass and 
speed up our bikes or stop the bullies, but uh, it just ended up as a more powerful tuning fork. He goes, we could, we could use those and we could see that will monitor the strength and we could just try to find the tower through that. And we said, holy cow, that is a brilliant idea. Now, meanwhile, back at Leon's house, after the other community resources officers had left, uh, first thing Leon did, because Leon wasn't 100%, was call his old job. Uh, and uh, they said, uh, Cafe Noir Chardonnay. Uh, and he said, yeah, hi. Uh, who, I'm just calling to see who's performing tonight. Uh, and they said, who's performing tonight? Uh, well, hold, hold on. Uh, which, which show? Because we have three shows booked t- tonight. Uh, and a 7, a 10, and an after midnight show. Which show? And he said, uh, uh, and they, the person on the phone said, Leon the Legend, is that you? Is that you? Like, are you still, uh, where, what happened? And then Leon hung up the phone. And he sighed, but then he paused as he hung up the phone, and then he started taking his phone apart, wondering, remembering back at the whole lab below the visitor center. Uh, and he realized that they were probably listening in to him somehow. So he started searching his house uh, for listening devices, and he actually thought about when he was at the school because they had the giant sonic ear, so it was a giant saucer collecting. So he started going through all his plates and bowls, you know, lamps, uh, anything saucer-shaped that could collect sounds, and he was tearing his place apart. Uh, And then when he thought he had given up pretty much... uh, and he sighed. He realized that there was one cabinet that he did, the top two shelves of the furthest cabinet. You know the cabinet everybody has that you can barely access anyway. And up there was his great-grandmama's tea set uh, that he'd never used because it was like fancy tea and fancy saucers. Maybe once when he took a cat home, he gave it a saucer of milk, uh, but he never put that saucer back anyway. And he started digging through there. And, of course, at the back of the thing, he found a little tube that went out uh, uh, from, like, uh, it was like using the vibrations to listen in on him from the tea set, which is a very fine, you know, great idea. But he didn't disturb it. He just kind of looked at it and said, oh, okay, you think I'll have myself a glass of tea, if, you know, clear my head. Uh, what a dream I had last night. So unrealistic. It couldn't possibly have happened. 100% my imagination. No more bog water for me. And then he turned on his uh, radio uh, he said, I'm just going to sit here and lie around and listen to the radio all day long. Listen to the old sports casting and talk and stuff. Uh, and then he turned on another radio in his bedroom, one on the talk and stuff and one on the sports stuff. And then he headed out uh, uh, like, uh, and uh, he was headed in the direction of uh, Francis's house. And he drove all the way over to Francis's house, and Francis uh, he knocked on the door, and Francis was already, like, in a not great mood because of everything that had to happen with Lenny, and she thought it was Lenny knocking on the door again. And when she opened the door, uh, Leon held up his finger like, shushy, 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 poo. And... Like in his head, he said this, like, your house is full of uh, wind chimes and uh, they could be listening in for any of the wind chimes because those probably collect sound really well. And first he started looking around through all her. She said, what are you doing? He said, shush, shush, shush. Uh, uh, he said, oh, boy. Uh, uh, like, uh, he made a fake voice. Uh, so it's me, Lenny, again. Uh, harumphity harumph. Uh, 
don't I know every, you know, he's just doing his Lenny imitation, and she was kind of going along with it. Don't you think Willow, he knew, he had a different take, but he was like, don't you think Willow uh, should have, like, you'd be direct depositing her paychecks into my account uh, for management? And she goes, oh, boy, Lenny, you're a genius. Uh, I for, I'm so sorry I kicked you out earlier. So they played along like that while he looked, and then eventually he gave up. He said, oh, boy. And then he was thinking, and then he was saying, well, uh, like, uh, they were trying to think. And then they figured out that they could turn on all of the fans in uh, Francis's house, which would make the wind chimes go. And she said, what are you doing? I'm waiting for uh, uh, Willow to talk to me through the wind chimes. And he goes, you're right about Willow. Stand by a wind chime and a fan in between the two. He goes, no, no, uh he goes, yes, uh, by the fans. He goes, not behind the fan or in front of the fan, to the side of the fan near wind chime, and we'll have a conversation. And she goes, why? And he goes, well, I'm afraid the wind will blow. Otherwise, he goes, yeah, he goes, this is the way our, we won't be. He goes, they're listening, the, the place below the visitor center. And she goes, place below the visitor center. And he goes, the album was a fake, Francis. The whole thing's a fake. There's no record company. There's no album. You were right. Uh, something strange, something odd is happening. And he goes, I'm sorry. And she goes, well, thank goodness. Uh, mother, My mother's instinct was correct. Uh, and she goes, what is this? And he goes, beyond the swamp, there's a visitor center. It's part of, he goes, it's cover. He goes, there's a greater community resource thing for the greater swamp area. And he goes, instead of community resources, they have a more uh, stricter view of defending the community against invasive things or whatever. And he goes, he goes but he goes, they haven't quite gained uh, traction, you know, to, to take over our departments and, and uh you know, move away from a community-based resource-sharing model. And she goes, I don't understand. And he goes, oh, that's, he goes, never mind. He goes, so below the visitor center, he goes, it's an entire operation, cafeteria, offices, uh, computer stuff, uh, mops and bur And she goes, okay. And he goes, dorm rooms, kids' dorm rooms. And she goes, kids' rooms? And he goes, yeah. And then he was talking about stuff he saw and the music and the posters and stuff. Uh, and she goes, well, that doesn't sound like uh, Willow at all. None of that sounds like uh, Willow. And he goes, well, that's weird. He goes, that's weird. And she goes, it's odd. Uh, so she goes, there's kids down there? And he goes, well, I didn't see any kids, just signs of kids. Uh and she goes, but no sign of anything that would be distinctively Willow's. And she goes, what do you think the kids were doing down there? He goes, I got no clue. He goes, I did read all these strange articles. You know, the rumors about humans and stuff. Uh, and powers and the power of music. And she goes, like in Bards and Big Bunnies? He goes, what's that? And she goes, the game all the kids in our community play. And some parents believe that it leads kids uh, to make poor choices, even though it doesn't. It actually boosts their self-esteem and resiliency and imagination. And he goes, what? And she goes, uh, she goes, it's a game the kids play. And music has magical powers. Uh, and he goes, well, he goes, I don't know. He goes, he goes, uh, but there's this one, he goes, he goes, what if the whole time, he goes, I've been trying to find Willow, but instead I've been looking for somebody else. Uh, and uh, Francis said, okay. And he said, let's uh, let's go to the library, do some more research, and uh, figure this out. And she says, okay, okay. Now, while that was happening, we had headed out with the electromagnetic tuning forks and... We were out there in what we call dark and wood, uh, looking, following the tuning forks. We were two by two, so Vaughn and LJ had one, and uh, uh, Billy and I had one. 
And Vaughn and LJ, you know, again, LJ is saying, don't you think something's going on with that duck-billed beaver? And Vaughn said, I don't know. And uh, said, don't, don't, it's acting extra odd. They're acting extra odd. And Vaughn said, I suppose. Uh, now, meanwhile, when I was walking with uh, Billy, Billy said, uh, can we go back to your house? I need a snack. Uh, and they said, well, we brought some snacks. Why don't you have a snack? She said, well, I, I, I'd prefer a snack, uh, a different snack. And also a nap. I think I need a nap. And I said, well, we got to keep going right now, Billy. I understand it, but uh, just try to, like, uh, walk, do a walking meditation or something and rest that way. And then Billy drifted away, but it didn't stick out to me because I said, do a walking meditation. And I started to kind of do one. And I think Billy was singing, like, a little bit... Uh, but meanwhile, Billy was going into like a, like a look back, a flashback, they say, uh, to another time with uh, Ma Max, Dr. Max, uh, when she lived there. And Dr. Max was get they were in the lab and, uh, or like a room. And Dr. Max was saying, okay, so you're going to sing this song and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to read what you see. And Billy said, read what I see. And Dr. Max said, yeah, close your eyes and walk. Uh, you're going to keep walking and read what you see. And here's the song. I'm going to play it a few times. And then you start singing and close your eyes and sing along. And the song was a song about signs everywhere. There being signs, uh, not good for always good for the scenery and a lot of the signs weren't positive. But in this case, they all had either numbers or letters as Billy started just walking and singing the sign. Some signs were shaped like shields, and some shine signs were triangles. Some signs were octagons. And then Ma Dr. Max said, now read the signs. And so Billy said, yeah, like uh, A1A. Dr. Max said, good, 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 and they were writing him down. She said, 60, 29, 17, stop. Uh, and Dr. Max said, okay, keep it with the numbers and letters. 528, uh, Billy would see these signs and just say the numbers, 4, 192, 417. But meanwhile, as we were walking, we eventually got back to, like, the, behind the transfer station where they had found Willow's albums. And LJ said, wait a second, we're back uh, at the transfer station. I thought we were headed towards, uh, the, there's no tower here. There's not even barely any trees here. This can't be the right place, uh... And then we said, get out the, the get out the tuning forks and the electromagnetic tuning forks and just see how did we get so lost? Uh, and they said, okay, try the batteries. Uh, and then they said, get out the battery tester. And then we realized that like they were all working. Uh, but yeah, they were showing the stronger. We were like almost where they should be. And then uh, LG said, wait a second. And he pointed one of them right at uh, Billy. And it shot up to full power. And he, he, he said, your throat singing. I can hear your throat singing now. And he said, you led us here to the transfer station. Like, you're leading us astray. What exactly are you doing? Like, why are you making us lost? And, uh... At first, Billy said, no, I didn't. And then I kind of took Billy's side. I said, hey, like, uh, LJ, no, we're just, lo like, calm down. You're just, high, it's just high stakes. Uh, and then we had strong uh, discussion about it, so strong that I said, do you want to have a dance off? And then LJ said, do you want to have a dance off? Uh, but then Billy didn't know what a dance off was. So then Billy started singing the song Impulsive like with, with Billy's powers. So then LJ started acting impulsively, which mostly meant running around and then running away. Uh, 
And then we said, what did you do? You just made him run off uh, without, like, he, he even forgot his, his tuning fork. Uh, and, like I said, I can't believe, and I said, you did lead us here. What were you doing? Uh, why are you making my friend act impulsively? Like, you're not supposed to use your powers against us. And I said, what are you such an oddball for? Which I greatly regret at this time. And then Billy ran off. And as Billy ran off, uh, Billy was uh, uh, ha having another memory back, uh, another flashback uh, to yet another time uh, when Billy uh, was uh, like, uh, had his second time. They said, okay, at the. At the place with Dr. Max, they said, okay, that really worked well. Dr. Max had given Billy a stuffed animal even, said, that went so good. Now we want you to look at some bigger signs. And he even showed Billy this map. Uh, and he said, I want you to kind of try to follow these signs. I want you to look for these ones, num these numbers and these shapes and follow them and then tell us what you see, the other signs that you might see, even handwritten signs or anything you see. And so Billy started, they actually like would like put Billy in this waterbed, which is like a real waterbed. Uh, uh, and I don't know, that's like something from the 70s and 80s uh, where you feel like you're floating. And this waterbed was blue like a cloud. And they even got a nice weighted blanket for Billy to have. Uh, and they said, just float on the waterbed and uh, picture the signs and sing the song and tell us what you see. And actually, like at this point, Billy even had this extra power. Uh, I wouldn't learn this so many conversations with Billy that uh, Billy didn't have to speak at this point. Like, Billy could transfer it into a TV, the images that Billy was seeing. Just the sign images, not everything. And so Billy started singing and floating on the waterbed and walking. And at first it was the signs they had told uh, Billy. Even a couple times Billy took wrong turns and it said U-turn or whatever, no passing zone, break out, break down lane. But then they say, okay, no, look for uh, this number. Uh, but as Billy was going, the more signs started increasing, and Billy started seeing these bigger billboards, uh, is what we call them. We don't have a lot of them because they're not that great to look at, but wherever Billy was, there was a lot of these. And Billy said, you know, uh, save money. Have you been, have you, is someone, uh, have you ever had a flat tire call this number? Do you need a place where there's a thousand T-shirts, a thousand T-shirts today? Uh, visit the sands of Sandy Shores Beach. Uh, as Billy went along, then Billy saw like further down, like and was broadcasting those billboards. But Billy saw like about ten signs down, this one blinking reddish light. And uh, it was like blinking, drawing Billy. And then Billy kind of was reading the other signs, you know. Have you ever had a day to go? Have you want to make a go-kart go? Go here, you know. Have, do, do you want the largest, your Ferris wheel? Uh, but meanwhile, Billy saw this blinking. And then she saw this tower. This was a billboard, but it was a three-dimensional billboard with a tower and Billy didn't broadcast at this one just yet because uh, Billy had gone into another level of zone and it was a t tower uh, going up off the billboard like three times the size of the billboard or this real looking tower and it was a wizard's tower and that's what it said it said experience uh Something would have fallen off the wizard's the tower of sorcery. I would think it was called. I call it the wizard's tower. And at the top of the tower, there's a window, and that's where the light was blinking, like a blinking candle. It was, it was apparently, I guess, it was solar powered. 
I said, can you pass uh, the sorcerer? Can you become a sorcerer? Again, there's letters and words missing, but pass the tests. Uh, what awaits you? Uh, wonder, something, something not great. Uh, journey into the Tower of Sorcery. And it had these, like, people smiling, uh, dressed like wizards, kind of. Uh, but still the light blinked, and that's really what B Billy didn't know it was a solar-powered light. And said, what is that light? Can you get in that tower? And so Billy walked up to the billboard, and there was a ladder going up. At the, and then Billy, like, noticed that uh, the tower actually extended down into the earth, uh, Next to, like, uh, on the back side of the bill billboard, the tower all, all the way went down into the earth. And Billy said, well, that's in it. So magic. That was another thing that caught Billy's eye. And Billy had, like, a flashback within a flashback to getting a magic kit uh, uh, one time from Dr. Max uh, with, like, a dancing rope or something. And cups were make balls disappear. And so Billy like was like, I got to find out if this light is magic. Uh, and so Billy climbed up the tower, uh, the well, the billboard, and then was looking for a way to get into the tower. And uh, found this do door. And then there was a spiral staircase going up the tower. Now, this normally in the past... Uh, would have been to, to service the light, but the tower had kind of changed with time and maybe something else. Uh, so the the tower was a little bit more, uh, like, organic. Uh, and as Billy started going up, the, and then the light was making a sound, on and off sound, uh, from inside the tower. But then Billy noticed that the tower also went down and that it wasn't stairs, it was more of a ramp uh, going down into the earth. And then Billy thought, Billy heard the sound of crunching carrots and uh, the twitching, and then even like a sound of a beak closing. And Billy looked up, and because the tower was, the sound traveled so strange, Billy like said, oh boy, I don't, not sure I enjoy these sounds. And so Billy said, Get, like, uh, it's time for me to not sing a sign song anymore. Uh, and said, uh, take me home, take me home. Uh, and so then Billy uh, woke back up uh, on the waterbed. And she said, uh, I don't I don't really like it. And, and, but Dr. Max and the team of scientists or whatever, lab coat wearing people were taking tons of notes and said, oh, boy. That is a lot of information we just learned about this. Holy mackerel, this is interesting stuff. Uh, really important stuff for us to write down. Uh, great job, Billy. Uh, and Billy said, I need to sleep. And, and Billy clutched uh, the stuffed, which with irony, I tell you now, is a stuffed uh, bunny. Uh, and went and fell deep, deep asleep and rested. Uh, and that's where we'll leave off for right now with Billy sound asleep. So nice uh, and cozy. Uh, good night. All right, I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently. Elizabeth, Andre, and John, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Judy, Alexandra, and Michelle, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Catherine, Scott, and Roshan, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Gwen, Michael, and Courtney, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Noah, Mary, and Karina, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Don, Angela, and Claire, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Susan, Rama, and Todd, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Nicole, Steve, and Laura, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Hope, Ryan, and Kyle, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. And Carl, Allison, and Lisa, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. And, uh, like, uh, Sleeping Me exists because of the people who support the show on Patreon and the people that support the sponsors. I really appreciate being able to bring you the show twice a week. 
Thanks to their support. And then a free way to support the show is spread the word, whether it's online or in person. Whenever podcasts come up, talk about podcasts in general. Talk about how to find podcasts and share about uh, Sleep With Me. Uh, that's how the show's always grown. I really appreciate that. And uh, speaking of spreading the word, here's something I want you to know about. 